So we are going to be building a now page in Levity. And a brief explanation of now pages, it's kind of analogous to an about page, but more focused on what you're actively doing. At the moment, a little shout out to a service called omg.lol, which is actually where I first got the idea from. And if you do want to check it out, it's a pretty cool sort of like indie, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like an indie web service that provides a bunch of different services, everything from like a profile page to a now page to, I believe they just added terminal-based gaming, <laughs> email, we're all shorteners, paste bins. It's all built by one guy out of, I think he's in Kansas City. It's a pretty fun little service and he has an API for everything too. So the first iteration of this is basically a backend service that I built in Next.js hosted on Vercel and I would curl that periodically, transform the entire response into JSON and then post that to his endpoint after it was transformed to Markdown to approximate the same sort of behavior. But went from there to building it directly in Next.js on Vercel using the same logic. And this is sort of my third iteration of the same thing over in 11D. It uses 11D fetch. I've got it set up with a workflow on GitHub Actions to run once an hour and redeploy everything to Vercel. It's mainly for things that are a little more transient and change more frequently, like music that gets pulled from Last.fm or the random TV and movies that I choose to watch on Letterboxd and Tracked. Uh, okay, go back. Data gets fetched from each API in the data directory inside of 11D and then exposed as a global object. And then I'm just running through that and templating inside of the actual 11D or now liquid template file too, which I'll step through in a minute. It's leveraging Last.fm for music and Oku for books, which exposes my reading history as basically an RSS feed in each of their collections. And then Letterboxd and Tract both expose RSS feeds for activity as well. And the, the last FM stuff's a little bit tricky too, since it's a 20 year old service and the default response is an old sort of like XML kind of soap sort of output. They've also decided to periodically just drop or replace properties inside of their API and the JSON structure too. So if you go to request artist images, those all come back as a placeholder, which I think they sold that as a bandwidth cost savings, which is was kind of interesting because they are owned by a rather large company. And I worked, I actually worked around that particular limitation by scraping the artist images in question, grabbing those, optimizing them locally. And those are hosted over at a CDN called bunny.net, which is super affordable. And I have a filter sitting inside of 11D that takes the artist name from the response normalizes that and then constructs the URL to the CDN and then loads the image. So fetching data out of JSON and XML in real time, outputting those feeds. Once they're normalized into JSON and a lot easier to work with, part of that is leveraging Extractus's feed extractor library, which you actually can pass JSON to and get a normalized output set. And let's see from there. So for an example, we basically pull in all of our inputs from our dependencies from Extractus, the asset cache from 11D, grab my particular Oku collection, and go ahead and cache the data, log in errors that come out. And then we have a books object full of what I'm reading now to display on that page. And so we've got all of our data built through there. My status is retrieved from that. It's going to be the first line of the now page. It's retrieved from omg.lol. They have a status.lol service that's analogous to, it. I mean, not really Twitter or Mastodon. It's kind of just a fixed status without the social interactions. And again, an API for that returns an emoji and the content if you choose to use an emoji. And getting into the templating, once we have the artists retrieved from Last.fm, we can go ahead and check for that, iterate through all of those, escape the artist name, should there be any strange characters, display the play count, use all of my verbose tailwind classes that I suppose 
entirely too lazy to style the thing myself. And then go ahead and set the artist image inside of the artist, pass it the artist filter. And if we error out, I just have a static 404 JPEG that basically displays, I think it's a music note instead of the artist. And then hopefully I eventually catch up on the ones that I've missed manually populating. Similar sort of setup for albums, but we have a deny list for anything that may be inappropriate or not safe for work. In this case, that happens to be one Death Grips album. And then any, anything else that should come up, basically just check and see that if it's, if it's in there. And if it is, then I rehost those album images on bunny.net as well. I guess with the caveat that I haven't actually looked into the legality of doing that, but presumably since I'm not making a profit, it falls under fair use, much like, you know, music brains, listen brains, what have you. I've heard sort of different takes on that, but I figure, you know, if I get in trouble for an artist image, I can find one with different rights from a different photographer. And then album art, if it's an issue, I'll go to a 404, but Blast FM being what it is, it's always available, but extremely poorly moderated. So you never know what folks happen to upvote for the selected album image. Uh, and then sort of the same take for books, media, and TV. The nice part of Extractus is that the JSON output that you get transformed from the XML is extremely consistent across services. So it's going to be things like the title, the URL, and the link. And the only thing that's going to change is the root object name that you set for the data file. You can extend those with additional fields, but I think for similar reasons, you can't really display like, I, I would have liked to display like TV show images or maybe movie images, but for, I think, bandwidth reasons on tracks part, given that they're a small service, they don't allow for hot linking. So I can't really do that and trying to rehost all of those images it sounds artist images were bad enough i didn't really want to get into any other sort of media letterboxd you can do that with movie images but i imagine should people start doing that they're probably going to turn it off for the same reasons uh, and then let's see going from there we have all right so we get into i guess 11d being what it is it's a statically built site it gets built to Vercel every time I push a new commit to it, but since I wanted to update the now page fairly regularly for things like music, since I listen to that all day when I'm not on work meetings, I have a GitHub workflow or a GitHub action that runs every hour and just requires a few different tokens from Vercel, like the org ID, the project ID, and several instances of the API token. And what that does is just goes ahead and rebuilds the entire site getting an updated now page out once an hour and also has the benefit of updating a few other things too, like my 11D follow feed or web mentions on all of my different posts. And I just sort of let this sit and queue in the background. It also generates a lot of emails from the Vercel bot that I've yet to figure out how to turn off, but it, uh, it, it works. It works really well. It's yet to really fail or do anything particularly funny. I think I did hit the free Vercel build limits when I was first doing this and pushing to Vercel constantly. So on a higher tier at the moment, but it works really well. And GitHub actions, aside from some reliability issues, while they're still new, have been nice to sort of leverage for things like this. And we have, all right, so we have the template output from the now page. We update everything automatically from the GitHub action and we've got everything sort of Sent out from there. And then if I drop my slides and pull up Orion over here, we have the finished output. And so this section right here will come from status.lol. Much of this is statically generated inside of the now liquid file, which again is reasonably verbose because of Tailwind, but you'll see things like just fixed content here, employer, SVGs for the NBA for the poor Lakers that I root for all the time, and some other content. And then that drops down into the artist images. All of these are going to be hosted over at bunny.net. And 
these will be sourced directly from last FM short of the ones included in the deny list. These are all going to be independent outputs from OKU, letterboxed, and then tracked. For tracked, it'll link out to, I guess, the app that I have loaded directly and show you the independent episode page should it choose to load. Letterboxed again. Just going to show specific entry for that. And then for last FM, it'll actually take you just directly to their artist page and have the artist images aligned with that, which I also went through the trouble of paying for last FM Pro because then you can prefer an artist image and align all of those things, which is, you know, tedious when it's a thousand images, but here I am. And yeah, I think with that, yeah, you should have basically sort of the building blocks to build something like this out. It's a lot of just collecting data, pulling in some legacy API keys and automating a few things. Be happy to answer any questions should anyone have it or I can throw it back to see as well.